going live what's up guys thank you for clicking on the video uh, i think i got you here looking for my connection but uh you're watching night drive live guys what's up yes it's a happy monday uh new show here obviously this is going into the third week but uh my name is damian knight and basically we just try to pack the show a little bit of variety different types of news obviously i'm going to give you a, a quick rundown of what we're going to talk about here today feel free to leave me a comment or uh throw me a sub if you've not seen the show before give me little shot here maybe you'll enjoy the show but uh, we're going to start with the uh the uh, hyundai sonata they're coming out with a new n line that's going to compete with the bmw type of m sport m series uh and we are going to talk about the new 2021 nissan frontier first time the nissan frontier is going to get an update in a very long time this is a very cool uh, version of that vehicle so that's going to be a fun one craig what's up my man uh we're going to talk about uh light post charging there's a big move for this over in europe and uh there's going to be some ups and downsides we're going to discuss it uh, obviously the race to mod a c8 corvette is on uh, everybody's going for the clicks and as you can see here those are twin turbos underneath so uh, no surprise that hennessy was the one to be able to pull it off i'm going to show you some audio clips and things like that uh, we're going to talk about a big deal uh, obviously some of the races uh, have been shut down uh, for various reasons and uh, so here we went with uh, imsa teamed up with iRacing. they had a super saturday event and i'm going to tell you it really went off big time and uh, people loved it and bmw dominated it. and i'm going to tell you why i'm going to show you some clips from that and then we're going to talk about that uh even though in, in california you're not supposed to leave but martha stewart has found a way uh to get around that in her aston martin so that's all here today folks on uh, night drive live i thank you for joining me and uh here we go forced induction fabricator engine management tuner shop owner i wanted to start a daily show about everything automotive you're watching night drive live <laughs> Alrighty, so guys, thank you for joining me. Uh, no, whoa, Tarzan, I'm gonna get that one right eventually. What's up, man? Cole, how are you? Couple regulars, obviously. Uh, throw me a comment, guys, if you're watching. But yeah, let's get right into it. So I don't know. Some people love. You want something sporty. You want something four door. You want something to carry folks around. Big uh, competing space for that uh, for that share. So uh, Hyundai and Kia, uh, the kind of corporate partners, they've been really pushing to increase their level of interior quality and kind of compete with the BMW uh, 3 Series. That's a very competitive segment. Obviously, the uh, Honda Accord, uh, the Camry you know just uh tons of offerings from almost every company it's a very hot space so uh hyundai has come out with a new n line that they are discussing and so this is going to be the uh the sonata n line version and uh, they're talking about 290 horsepower and 310 foot pounds of torque uh, it's going to get you 19 inch wheels a uh, little bit little bit different interior uh, and it's going to be an eight speed dual clutch so uh, this is something that uh, you know you may want to look at obviously pricing is going to be in the upper 30s in uh, the three series starts at uh, the low 40s to get to kind of competitive uh, uh, zero to 60 times and whatnot you're probably going to spend 45 on a BMW so that upper 30s tier a lot of Japanese brands and uh, obviously the Korean brands here are kind of competing in that space zero to 60 times they're talking about maybe 6.6 .6 seconds the uh and let me show you this is going to be the interior here obviously 19 inch wheels i'm a little conflicted on the styling reviewers say that the interior is really nice uh but if you're not down with the uh, sonata you might want to uh in the face i'm, I'm just not sure about the face but uh if you're not down with the sonata the kia uh, optima gt is going to be an alternative option they have confirmed that power uh, level at 286 uh, horsepower and 311 pound feet so uh, eight speed dual clutch as well i think the car looks a little bit better uh on the kia side but uh you know obviously 6.6 .6 seconds is still nothing like the honda accord 2.0 uh turbo which is like 5.4 to 60 and i i don't like zero to 60 times guys you know if you watch my channel i don't i don't like zero to 60 because now we're getting into sub three second and i think that eventually we're going to go from you know the new c9 corvette goes zero to 60 in 2.643 seconds you know we're going to get down into the hundreds i think eventually but in this zone the five second six second seven second range i think it's still a good indicator and and i'll just point out that in 1994 
four when the new Camaro Z28 came out with the LT1, zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. So to think that we have a Honda Accord 2.0 T four door getting into that range, that equates to about a 14 second quarter mile. So maybe, maybe something to look at if you're interested in uh, going with a four door, uh, obviously um, they're getting interesting. They're getting competitive. So uh, let me get over to the new Nissan Frontier, which, you know, I do some Nissan videos on the channel. We have a first-gen Pathfinder. I love that first-gen hard body and uh, obviously early forerunners. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the Nissan Frontier after 2004 hasn't really received any updates. Uh, it's just an aging platform, and that's kind of been the case for the 350 and 370Z, which we talked about on Saturday's show. Nissan looks like they're making a few moves. They're updating their new logo, which I talked about on Saturday as well. Uh, and then where there is some rumors of the 400Z. So in the Nissan Frontiers case, they're saying that they, they are not sure yet, but they think that maybe the Titan frame will be modified for this truck. Obviously, it's going to get a, a new engine, new transmission, all the typical things. They, they released this top 10 things they're doing differently. We're going to market it different. Uh, new motor, new tranny. I mean, I would hope so after, you know, considering the thing's been out since 2004. Or so uh but uh, you know i really like the possibilities this is kind of like a rivian type of platform and interestingly if you remember my show maybe on friday i was talking about the 53 dollars silverado lease deal and it was on the hardest to sell uh short bed quad cab and so that's what a lot of these vehicles are they don't sell strongly in the united states in some ways at least according to the big the big dogs the big three but um you know here here they come the rivian and and uh you know the gladiator and all these little short bed uh quad cabs so i uh, really like the look of it though very aggressive in this one especially this is a cool overland reminds me of expedition overland there's it's a great channel on youtube i suggest uh they do a lot of overlanding with toyotas and, Je and jeeps and everything very cool channel well produced check it out um but uh yeah i mean very aggressive styling cool front end like i'm about it i'm about it so we'll see what happens obviously they're going to try and compete with the trds and and things and a lot of toyota love out there hard to beat uh toyota that's for, that's for sure so any toyota japanese truck owners anybody out there watching uh into the japanese brands of, of trucks uh because i i've i've obviously uh, i like the new uh like the chevrolets like the zr2 and, and things like that they talk about some of these options i love that raptor-esque obviously who doesn't like the raptors lots of raptors out there but uh let me get into uh the the big deal here get into webcam mode obviously hennessy has uh you know everybody's scrambled to get their c8 first tj hunt he went all the way to the east coast to get his um, because of delivery schedules and things like that hennessy got a hold of theirs obviously lots of different youtubers and things are ripping these cars apart uh so hennessy um you know they decided they're gonna you know they're gonna do what they do they turbo lots of things um and so they got the twin turbos on here pretty quickly i'm curious on the tuning of c8 because in zr1 c7 zr1 hp tuners actually had quite a time getting to the point that they can tune that ecu it was a lot more locked down than the other c7s they kind of had to do a secondary you had to send your your pcm ecm whatever you want to call it out to them and they would have to either internally modify it or i believe you could run kind of a piggyback arrangement um and so that it would function so it took them like a year to do it and obviously with only about 1500 zr1s and c7 it was it wasn't a big drive uh to put the product out there because there wasn't much demand but i'm wondering if some of that platform that uh, in terms of programming may transfer to the c8 and get this thing tunable quicker uh, more quickly but they did have it running as i'm going to show you here in a second and um if you didn't catch it let me go ahead and let you listen in all right big j big j go ahead big j Rev it, Big J, rev it. So, you know, definitely open downpipe, that's for sure. And uh, they put the painter's tape on the fenders because the downpipes are kind of aimed right at the fenders there. You can see a little, some of Hennessy's uh, typical projects in the background there. But, uh, not bad not bad and uh, obviously we'll be looking forward to some numbers to see if it's 
if it's tunable i would assume that it is i mean you can obviously get away with idling and certain things by just installing the system and keeping mass airflow and things in place but uh, we'll have to see you know where that goes and obviously i'll update uh, because everybody's watching the c8 you know it's uh, it's still in in a lot of demand and they are still delivering them even despite the things happening they are delivering the c8s to the people that have ordered them and so uh the chain the supply chain of c8s is alive and well um wanted to jump over to let me find a good screen for this um so lamp post charging has become uh, a subject that's uh, more popular in europe i think than than here but some of our inner cities i think they, they may start looking to pick up on that but a uk project uh, with siemens is building electric car charging into a half mile of lamp posts um, and so fiat chrysler is the highest percentage of hybrids in this lineup uh, and yet the company has the lowest fleet mileage of any automaker so that's kind of interesting so you know obviously the push is if you park in the street where do you charge the car and so you know i, I really was thinking about it for a second and i'm like if we get into this you know charging on the street uh i think it's definitely going to for places that probably have uh a lot of competition for parking now all of a sudden you're going to have this battle between evs certain permits uh versus gas vehicles and i'm just going to point out uh, you know the demographics of people that own electric cars uh at this stage of the game is a very high-end demographic it's uh, I've, I've talked about tesla having the best average credit score of any buyer 156,000 average household income. Um, so, you know, it, it, it kind of starts to make you question in some of these areas like the UK, which is ultra, uh, I don't know what the, uh, you, you insert the word, but ultra uh, volatile politically in some ways, uh, you will get some areas to where maybe you'll see gas people, gas holes, as some of them call it, <laughs> fighting over, um, you know, where you can park. And you can see here, you know, um, in some of these areas, this, uh, you know, vehicle parked must be charging uh, all posts. So I, I don't know. And, and and to be quite honest, you know, what's the chances of somebody just walking by? You know, there's going to be that guy that's just going to walk down the street popping plugs and you're going to wake up in the morning and <laughs> nobody's going to have. So now you've got to have security. Now you've got to have things like that. So could could get interesting but uh let me check at your comments obviously i always check the comments guys uh obviously throw a comment below if you're watching this video after it's already been live and recorded and i check the comments all the time but uh cole says uh frontier looks good uh i i agree i agree and craig says the battle for the 2000 horsepower c8s absolutely um we'll wonder you know obviously in texas lots of straight line roll racing texas you know 2k they, they rename it every year monsters down in texas i almost moved to houston when i actually ended up moving to georgia uh, and then i skipped houston and went to vegas so obviously i'm live from vegas guys um but uh always that damn guy you know so so uh yeah i mean we'll see what happens here uh you know lots of people are obviously still excited and burning gasoline and here we're talking about electrified lamp posts and charging stations so let's see what do we have next uh yes let's talk about um let's talk about this situation here i'm excited about this i'm going to tell you right now i've i've been uh a gran turismo player since 1998 um i played gt1 on playstation one uh i've been a huge fan of that platform uh and uh, and in 2010 i built my first cockpit and um so i've played gt sport i've competed in gt academy i was actually uh ranked 11th in north america at one point a couple points actually uh almost won gt academy and got to the finals in new york but just missed it by about 13 spots out of 700,000 people at the time so uh, i'm big into online racing i think it's a great way to supplement uh when you can't get track time and obviously track time is expensive you know you have consumables tires brake pads and, and depending on the car you're running you know if you're running a miata it's 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 great fun and it's generally cheap but guys want to go out there with 650 horsepower so uh there's a big expense to come with hpdes and so a way to replace that and i've always felt 80 percent of your fundamentals of driving are used when you're using a cockpit in a, in a platform like iRacing or gt sport so so uh as you may or may not know in the world endurance uh, ch uh competition championship in europe that's regulated by the fia aco here in the united states we have imsa and so the fia has partnered with um polyphony digital which is gran turismo and so they've been doing the regulation of balance of performance and everything online with gt sport i want to point out to you i have a link in the description 
of a video i did on my prior channel i did have online racing videos of kind of a teaching series uh, i'm not i don't have them listed but if you want to watch a race in the way that i've explained uh i, I kind of talk through the race i show you a, a mass victory uh you can check the link in the description and watch that video it's unlisted it's the only way you'll find it so uh what happened here let's let me get to the point i'm trying to keep going here um so let me get to the point what happened was is because sebring was canceled because of all the things going on a few of the drivers a lot of pro drivers are starting to online race and have been for a couple years now probably two three years and some of the bigger teams f1 uh very very heavily funded teams they've been doing uh sims for quite a, quite some time now because they realize you can get a lot of setup information you can you know get warmed up on the track and uh they see the bet the value and they say the drivers that aren't online sim ra racing are at a disadvantage so everybody's pretty much gotten on board they made a suggestion hey since we can't do sebring why don't we do an online race so that's how this all unfolded and so let me um let me kind of run this in the background uh, while I kind of talk to you and you can kind of see the start of this race so to the non-keen eye you may almost think this is real but obviously this was the eye racing uh, presentation and I'm going to go ahead and just tell you a little bit about it so uh, what what ended up happening was uh, for the most part people ran BMWs and Porsches in this race they didn't have to stick with their manufacturer they kind of got to pick what they wanted to uh what what they wanted to use but uh guys i see you posting your gas prices 249 236 last week 189 in chicago i think we're 240 something like that in vegas here but um cole i see you're on gt so that's cool um but yeah essentially these bmws in this particular race they ran uh they mostly qualified up front but uh these are all pro drivers so it was cool for the first time to see literally all perfect all pros uh race in close proximity on i racing and so um you know they they basically um i was wondering if chaos would ensue how many guys would be clean because you know this is a very typical very tight start um and uh so it's pretty cool when you see them get off i mean it's a it's a pretty there's a few guys that aren't super experienced in online racing there's a few little quirks and you can see that they struggled but bmw went all in with this deal and that's what ended up leading to a massive victory of these two uh, red bmws up front you see jesse crone here in the black the black 25 car he runs that in wec uh you see a guy wipe out he's one of the lesser <laughs> experienced guys but um but it was a great start it all unfolded uh, fantastically well and um you can see a little bumping and, and grinding there but great great passing great awareness turner uh struggled a little bit out front but essentially what happened was bmw went all in with this deal they equipped their drivers their their factory works drivers with cockpits they partnered with B, bs plus competition esports drivers uh alexander voss and lauren heinrich and uh they coached them and talked to them through uh, headsets and uh, so there was fuel management in this race there was tire management they had done test races so they got an immediate not just a platform advantage but an experience advantage so uh they actually ended up dominating this race up front these two these two guys this is nikki katzberg in first at this point and bruno spangler and interestingly nikki katzberg was racing uh third seat in the c8r um at the longer races that bmw loaned him to gm so he is in um a corvette uh sometimes here and so he was running um first most of this race he didn't end up winning uh spangler got ahead of him um but this was a this was a great experience and i'm gonna tell you what it's gonna do for online racing overall is huge um um so dunan uh who is the new president of imso said that he was blown away by the success and so obviously some of us who have been online racing for years are not blown away we understand that this is like it's been very viable you can see the graphics the experience the physics it has gotten extremely uh extremely a lot of transfer a lot of skill transfer uh, uh eyesight your hand speed your feel uh and and frankly i th a lot of people have argued that have online raced a lot is your, your other perceptions almost elevate uh, uh android so there's uh android asks what's online racing like video games uh well 
Uh, years ago, yes. I mean, obviously, we remember back to pole position, you know, back in the 80s, which I, I played. <laughs> I was on, you know, I was a video game racer, but uh, there was a crossover, I would say. And, and Gran Turismo kind of started something to where they tried to take a, a, a console gaming platform and make it very real. And uh, they pushed the envelope of physics and the way that the software worked, the way that the design of the game worked. And it evolved over years. And uh, I would say probably, and I, I can't say accurately when iRacing started, but iRacing all of a sudden seemed to be something that you knew was going to grow into something very legitimate. And so, you know, this went on for years. I'd say probably mid-2000s, maybe iRacing uh, started getting more active. And so collectively what started happening is as laser scanning and things started to get uh, more widespread and accurate, they started scanning these tracks, and they scan them within a millimeter, I think it is, or a half a millimeter of accuracy. All the bumps, the, the grooves, I mean, it's, it's extremely accurate now. Um, Michelin, uh, obviously the various tracks, the manufacturers, they've provided CAD data for their vehicles, uh, to these programming, uh, you know, to these companies that make games. And so Polyphony Digital, they really focused on saying, look, we want to make this as realistic as possible. And I would say in probably 2013 or 2012 was the first GT Academy to where you would go on and basically race against the clock and the top drivers would end up advancing to a real competition that they would fly to. So that's kind of how that evolved. And iRacing kind of took a different direction. So we're not going to focus so much on the gamey side, but the, the real the reality of it so they started modeling uh a they focused a lot on tire modeling and and uh basically the interaction of the tire versus the surface um and really got big into the physics of it so uh today there is kind of obviously esports has gotten much larger like in vegas let me tell you for example if you're familiar with the pyramid uh that is the very famous casino in vegas uh so that was built in the 90s and it's kind of outdated now and uh, you know vegas as a whole has kind of moved away from locations they don't want to have new york new york and uh all you know like the pyramids they want to just make it more generalized i guess so they've thought what do we do with this pyramid well that's now becoming like an esports mecca you can go there and drop your kids off there are video games supposedly ever i haven't gone there yet but uh, this has gotten larger and larger and much more realistic and so today to answer your question android like um you have teams that are investing hundreds of thousands of dollars now in sim rigs, full hydraulics. And like I was saying, a lot of people who have sim raced are now saying like there are other parts of your senses, how a blind person, when they lose their eyesight, their ears enhance uh, and things like that, their sense of smell. When you drive without feeling the car's movement, it makes your fingertips more sensitive. It makes your eyesight more uh, able to see the car's attitude out the windshield versus waiting to feel it. So it actually makes you much more reactive. And so let me, let me tell you the proof of it. Um, what ended up happening was Nissan was very in... <laughs> Cole says they supposedly gave a ride to a guy who won a GT uh, championship. Uh, that multiple and so that's what i was going to bring up here um nissan was very connected to polyphony digital with gran turismo which is ps playstation um and so when as the gt academy winners have have uh basically won the overall they became nissan drivers factory drivers so uh in 2015 i think was the first year that a that a gt or a gran turismo driver winner uh, uh, an all video game if you will driver drove at lamar and he had, they actually drove that lmp uh one nissan um and so they have a they have a series called the blank pain gt uh and it's kind of an amateur it's supposed to be amateur like gentlemen racers um so nissan said well look we have amateurs because these guys were gamers and um you know th they weren't full-time paid works drivers for nissan so they entered them and they got banned after the first year because they concluded that the guys were just too fast. There was too much of an advantage, and uh, so they basically eliminated them. Uh, so they're not allowed to drive in certain series. So there's no question that we are seeing that the best way to find new talent, how you see these shows like um, like uh, America's Got Talent or things like that, that there's a lot of hidden ability uh, just in random households that – you know these guys couldn't go karting they didn't have a family to bring them up in racing and pay all you know what it takes to really build your way up in in the crowd because you know when i lived in georgia i lived very close to road, road atlanta 
and there's just race teams everywhere same with north carolina and you know it, it's a who you know type of business it's why i couldn't really break into it despite having run a, an automotive manufacturer i built race cars i went down there i had equipment i had welders i had you know a full full shop tooling i couldn't make a deal because when somebody comes in and opens a race team everybody gets on the phone and calls who they know so you know when it comes to you know guys that, that just you know single moms or whatever they don't have you know a dad to take them racing that doesn't mean they don't have the skill set to be very fast and so that's what these uh sims are starting to reveal so i think my point in telling everybody this is that because bmw dominated this they invested so much they got an immediate advantage in this here you know have imsa president dunan saying he was blown away by the success and it feels like there should be a series so i think we're seeing a breakthrough here um to kind of transition this so that's going to be some of the kind of positive byproduct of all that's going on right now so they say they want to do it again nascar did one uh they said it was like a ton of fun these drivers said they were sweating you know and I, which i can attest to i've i've raced you know uh for years in the cockpit and believe me it's uh you'll, you'll get sore in your chest if you run a lot of feedback i mean uh you will sweat you will need a fan on yourself so i mean uh, I, you know i've driven race cars been in the track days and done that and i'm telling you it's just not that much different at all and, and in many ways it, it vastly improved my driving just because of the seat time uh, and then obviously the other thing you get to practice is what they call racecraft. It's it's driving in close proximity to other vehicles and getting good at it and learning passing techniques and things like that. So uh, it, it, it's a great thing. And I can tell you it's something you ought to look out for. So again, down in the description, I have a link of a, of a video I've uploaded. I've not put out there. You can't find it. Um, but yeah, Scott Davis, I'm with you, uh, my, my friend. He says, I totally agree. I missed my calling to be a driver because I grew up poor. And, uh, yes, welcome. <laughs> welcome to that club for sure. Uh, you know, I played video games with the best of them, and uh, I've always been good at it, always been fast. And I, I, I feel I was very validated when I ran GT uh, Sport over the years. I regularly go on there, and, and I can run with the top drivers that have been in the championship time-wise. So, um, you know, it's something that, uh, you know, I've always known I could drive fast, but um, it's just funding. It's a money game. So, you know, it's a great way, I think, though, for the guys like Scott Davis, myself, and many others who can't afford to even do track days sometimes at times. Uh, I'm telling you, you can invest in a sim rig and, you know, maybe you spend $2,000 even uh, if you really want to get aggressive with it a track day a couple track days you know my, my tires on my corvette are 1600 bucks so i mean i might get six track days out of those tires maybe maybe a little more depending on how how aggressive i am but you know brake pads fluid wear and tear risk i mean what's two thousand dollars and that's the big thing that these teams realized you know a test day say a c8r or one of these guys that drive these bmws they have to rent a track they have to go out and test uh you know that'll be a thirty thousand dollar weekend so what what's what's spending 50 grand on a on a sim rig that's hydraulic and all that stuff it's it's nothing to them they're like that's money well spent uh, and as it gets more accurate, they can try setup changes. They can uh, really work with alignment specs and things like that. So it, it is really a, a legitimate deal. And um, so for those of you out there that, that online race, I mean, you, you understand it. Uh, if you haven't, I suggest you give it a shot because you'll be very surprised uh, how cool it can be, how, how fun it is and how engaging it is. But uh, I wanted to point out, you know, old Martha old martha fresh you know not fresh out the pen obviously that didn't change her much um she is on a, a lockdown there in california and um so there's you know you're not supposed to leave unless you really need necessities so somebody captured her and she kind of said she had to deliver eggs to a friend so interesting part is this is an aston martin db9 got a v12 and it's not a not a very nice car very good car and a manual gearbox she she let somebody know it is a manual and she said you know when you shift it right she doesn't drive it much but uh, old martha's out there with a six speed and a v12 so <laughs> thought that was interesting uh i don't know but uh, i guess you know inevitably i think this proves that people are just gonna do what they're gonna do so we're just gonna have to get through this however but 
<clears throat> any questions guys any any viewers uh have anything like i said if you haven't uh, subbed to my channel please give it a shot guys i'm gonna do this monday through friday um you know just kind of keep it consistent i'm gonna work on some videos this week i'm gonna probably do a pathfinder video um an update on the build i've added lighting i've added a lot of stuff got some crazy drone footage out in the cut um and uh, so i'm gonna probably put that together here today and a couple corvette videos really want to get something done because what else can i do at this point so my girlfriend is uh, her salon is closed uh, for 30 days and she's obviously basically self, uh, self employed so am I so we, we're kind of shut down besides uh, this so I'm just going to grow this and I appreciate everybody that that uh, has been watching and Android and Cole and a lot of you guys I'm, I'm getting used to seeing and super appreciate that uh, please like the video uh, it helps it it just promotes it I notice YouTube hasn't been promoting the same way because of the news and uh, people are getting kind of you know sidetracked but yeah you know, the corvette the videos are coming scott trust me my my z06 has been <laughs> has been down for a while for a myriad of reasons um but i actually had to do some work on the c6 also uh, my girlfriend's c6 that she daily drives and so i'm going to do a video on something that needs to be addressed with the ls3s <clears throat> um so you know craig martin there in the comments you know he just started a new channel and he's uh i see he's he's starting to bust out more content as well and i think that's what uh you know we have to make the best of it and uh you know if you can work from home do something from home build a car i talked about building a model uh i think there's a lot of things people you know take this opportunity to say you know what maybe i'll maybe i'll do something i haven't done hadn't had the time to do so sometimes forcing a vacation is a good thing you know but yeah the my car you know we daily both of ours both of our corvettes and um you know it's it's it, you know it's it's interesting to keep up i lost my shop um that i had uh, a few uh, i guess it's what eight months ago uh the landlord doubled on me and i had to get rid of it so um you know i'm very more compromised space wise than i've been in 15 years and uh, i you know so i'm looking for some partnerships out here in vegas to kind of get into a shop or something again i have a carbon project and a lot of i have a lot of things on hold corvette wise i have some carbon parts for the corvette that i've not shown anybody uh because i i need to get into mold making and get to production level molds and i've been kind of looking for a space to do that here um and just with all that's happening it's just it's been one thing after another for me uh in the past couple months so i, I have carbon parts that nobody has that uh uh, i'm telling you if you see them for the c5 and c6 uh people are going to like them i've worked with carbon uh quite a bit so uh, and they're going to be affordable i have a lot of ideas man and i've done a lot of different work i'm not sure if you're familiar um or uh, you know i've uh, people say oh i've watched your videos and i didn't know but oh scott they got you they got you you got oh man what have you been doing scott scott's hitting the hitting the warnings uh, be, be careful scott uh you know the system you know you have to be very careful on youtube so uh for demonetization and for you know flagging my video i have to be very careful of what's said um what what audios in the background and things like that but but yeah working on a lot of stuff uh carbon wise so that's what i'm going to continue to do um, but i appreciate everybody watching and um you know throw me some comments in the real comment section down below if you have any questions anything you think of i will always look at that and uh, obviously um you know throw a like on this video and sub if you haven't but uh, scott no big deal i i didn't see it uh <laughs> lace said uh he said yeah it's just you know they filter everything uh, for advertiser friendliness um and uh, i'm not actually monetizing this video i've been getting all these have been demonetized almost every live show i've done uh so it's kind of challenging me as, as to how i will um go forward and i th probably am going to propose a patreon here shortly uh or something like that um i have some ideas i'd like to upload more online racing content and things like that but um it's just not something i want to kind of pollute my main channel with uh, it's, it's already pretty diverse and so i'm just trying to keep it with corvette overland and now this show uh, and i don't want to split the channel because i i'm i'm fighting for five thousand subs on my way to a hundred thousand this year i don't know how i'm gonna do it but i'm gonna do it i i got feeling i'm gonna do it somehow i don't know how <laughs> i will not give up so guys I, I totally appreciate it if uh no more questions or anything like that i mean i'm gonna go ahead and rock out of here and uh get to something else i need to pay some attention to but I, like i said i have some corvette videos coming 
I'm going to shoot out in the parking lot, um, and um, we'll see what happens, guys. Keep your head up. Look forward. Plan your build. Plan what you're going to do with your car when we all get past this, and I appreciate it. And so I'll see you on the next one, guys. Thank you for watching Night Drive Live. Damian Knight out.